So I saw a really interesting article um, today. And uh, while I was just, you know, doing some reading, doing some studying uh, from Guyton's uh, medical textbook of physiology, <laughs> fascinating. Um, yes, that's what I do in my free time. Um, and uh, Psychology Today, it came across uh, and got my attention. And I want to show you this, what this says right here. I'm going to read this to you. Uh, but this may explain why so many people are suffering, especially during and post pandemic. All right. Pandemic. So the title of the article was feeling fatigued and burned out. Inflammation may be playing a role. Are you wondering why you feel fatigued all the time? OK, now here's what they said. This is what's amazing, guys. Nearly three in five U.S. adult workers say, surveyed in 2021 by the American Psychological Association reported negative impacts of work-related stress involving lack of interest, motivation, energy, and effort, okay? They also reported experiencing cognitive wariness, 36%, emotional exhaustion, 32%, and physical fatigue, almost half. So somehow the pandemic... Um, uh, the pandemic related burnout has felt different and people can't quite account for why they feel this way. And so uh, they didn't know why so many people were feeling this way. Doctor actually wrote about it. Um, and this is what they said with this study from Massachusetts General Hospital in collaboration with King George uh, College, King King's College in London. Okay. Here's what they said is that they actually found that healthy individuals examined after the enforcement of the lockdown, okay, had elevated brain levels of two independent neuroinflammatory markers, okay, compared to the pre-lockdown participants. So they had these higher inflammatory markers. And um, what they basically found is, is with these markers, is that these people after the quote unquote lockdown, which what did we do? We masked, we socially distanced, um, we stayed away from people. Uh, we didn't, we weren't supposed to meet up with people. We were supposed to be by ourselves. We were supposed to isolate this whole idea behind masking, isolation, social distancing, all of that stuff has been, and I've said this from day one, an absolute utter, utter failure because it's always been about the soil, not about the seed, but they always thought about, you have to be uh, afraid of a virus when all along. I've said, the Wellness Way Approach has, has always said that it's all about your immune system adaptability. Work on strengthening the body, not trying to uh, hide out from a virus indefinitely. And they found that that has been an utter failure. So not only as far as the spread of COVID-19, but one of the things they actually found was that this isolation, this lockdown, the masking, all of this had a massive detrimental effect on the American worker. And what they found is that because of this, they started to exhibit in certain parts of the brain, higher inflammatory markers that were leading to fatigue, that were leading to depression, um, that were leading to uh, feelings of loneliness, isolation, and feelings of just lack of motivation. And so one of the things that they found is, is they said the reason why they started feeling this was because of inflammation as a result of these efforts, um, and they said that because they did this, if these adverse social experiences like social isolation, perceived social threat, it induced an inflammatory response while suppressing, now listen to this, antiviral immunity. So what did it do? It promoted inflammation and it actually made you more susceptible to getting sick. So let me say this again. Uh, social distancing, six feet apart, masking, keeping kids at home actually not only made them more depressed, more tired, more fatigued, uh, made them lack motivation, but it actually hurt their immune system. Imagine that this two year experience experiment, which went completely against science and went completely against physiology because not one leader, not one quote unquote politician, not one health expert in the medical community ever said that maybe we shouldn't do this. Maybe we should start strengthening the host. Maybe we should start getting off sugar. Maybe we should be testing our immune responses. Maybe we should work on strengthening the host versus trying to, um, to, uh, trying to weaken the environment to everyone because the collateral damage 
was absolutely catastrophic. And we will be seeing this uh, the, the more that, that research comes out and the more that people aren't afraid to actually start speaking up. And so what it actually found is they said that because of this, social isolation uh, has been associated with impaired memory, immune dysfunction. Studies have also demonstrated that social isolation could increase immune markers such as interleukin-6, which is basically a pro-inflammatory uh, meteor, a mediator that is um, released during times of inflammation. It could also increase mycoglial uh, cell activity in the brain as part of the inflammatory response. So now it is ch actually changing the brain as far as inflammatory response uh, is called. Called sterile neuroinflammation, these changes resemble changes caused by infections and they correlate with fatigue and anxiety. In the comment section, guys, I want you to, if you're willing to admit this, if the two years of stopping the spread, slowing the curve, um, if the two years of doing this actually created in you some problems with motivation, some problems with anxiety, um, uh, some, some problems with severe fatigue. And not only that, if you have a child that experienced this as well, because Lord knows that we did in our family as well. And listen, the reason why I get so riled up about this is the two things that I always say is don't mess with my business and don't mess with my family. And yet this lockdown has tried to mess with both. And this is why I've been so vocal um, because of the impact that it has on kids for future generations. Here's the reason why I know that it's gonna impact future generations. And sometimes I wonder if we can even come back from this because here in the state of Illinois, I was actually part of a lawsuit to remove mass mandates from our schools. We were one of the last schools that still had mass mandates. We were able to achieve a temporary restraining order uh, against the governor of Illinois. And despite having that temporary restraining order and literally ordering masks to get off of kids or making it mask optional, afterwards, literally 70% of kids still decided to wear a mask because they were afraid, they were sold a lie, um, they were guilted into wearing a mask. And as a result, I wonder how many kids are experiencing things like anxiety, lack of motivation. If you guys are teachers, speak up because of how hard it's been to try to get your students actually motivated. So, and actually having a low, lowered immune system response in response to actually having a mask mandate, social distances and things like that. Guys, we're coming out of this. Uh, all of a sudden, everything has just magically disappeared. I wonder why, because the narrative broke down so quickly, but now we're actually reporting on how damaging it actually was. So here's what psychology today says that you can do, all right? Here's what they, they say that you can do if you are experiencing these things. Number one, socialize, okay? Get out and start speaking to people. Number one, your diet. Your diet makes a difference when inflammation, guys, one of the things of why we get such great clinical results is that we know the inflammatory foods based off of testing that are going to be unique for you. So now they're talking about nature-based imagery. Get out in nature. Gee, I wonder. And guys, one of the reasons why nature is so important in barefoot walking, grounding, going out in the sun is because of melatonin production, which is the universal antioxidant inside the body that helps repair the mitochondria within your cell. And then finally, they say physical exercise. So fix, physical exercise can improve the neuroimmune response and can be anti-inflammatory, okay? Work with your doctor to determine what routine is best for you, in which we do this with people once they get to a certain point where we lower the inflammatory markers and we feel that, yes, exercise at this point is actually going to benefit them. But think of this over the last two years. What did we do? They're saying exactly opposite in order to help people who are depressed, fatigued, lack motivation, lack energy because of low-grade chronic neuroinflammation as a result of the stressors that were imposed from the pandemic. So what do they say? Socialize, eat better, go out in nature and start exercising. But what did we do? What did we do, especially right here in Illinois? We said, don't go out in public. Don't have your friends over. Don't socialize. Don't go to restaurants. Number two, they said nothing about diet. Nothing whatsoever. They said diet doesn't matter. Number three, they said 
don't go out in nature. They literally close things that allowed us to be able to get together, socialize, and go out and enjoy nature. And what else did they do? They closed down the gyms. They closed down the gyms, except in the gym that I own. We didn't close it down. We kept it open and we said, come after us. You're welcome to do whatever you want to do, but we are not going to close the gym. We are not going to isolate people because for so many people, not only is it helping with inflammation, but it is also therapeutic for them. And so we never, ever did that. We were the first ones to open up. And the reason why is, is because I understand physiology and I understand science and how the body works. And we weren't going to ever go against that. So remember, we go with the body. We don't go against the body. And looking at this today, psychology today actually now agrees what we've been saying all along, that it's about not about the, the virus, it's about the host. And doing those things to socially distance, to isolate, actually creates a bigger problem. And we're seeing now the repercussions actually from it. So guys, get loud about this and make sure if you are getting loud so that you make sure that this never, ever, ever happens again. God, I pray that this never happens again for our kids, for our future, for our mental health. I hope that it never happens again. But the only way that it's not going to happen again is when we have tens of million people, tens of millions of people who understand what health is and where it comes from. And it doesn't come from a pill. It doesn't come from a potion. It doesn't come from a lotion. And it certainly, certainly, certainly doesn't come from an injection. Guys, I got to go. I've been here a long time today. Be well. Make sure you guys share this video. I appreciate all of your responses. I appreciate everybody that's uh, watching. And I hope you guys have a great evening. Be well.